Hello everyone, Zaid from Z Security here, and in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to find the exact location of a phone or a target computer. Now, there are a number of tools that can be used to do this, but they fail most of the time, and doing this is not that hard anyway. So follow me, I'm gonna show you how to do it step by step, and by the end of the video, you'll be able to use the skills that you will learn here to do so much more than simply find the location of a target. Now before we get into the video, I would like to apologize about the lack of content in the last while, but if you follow us on social media, you would know that I've been very busy with the hacking hardware that we released recently, and the hacking masterclass that I released, and also the live hacking videos that I do on the live discord. So follow us on social media to stay updated with what I do and what with what we're doing here at Z Security. Don't forget to smash the like button if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Also, before we jump into the video, I would like to thank our sponsors, Linode. Linode is a powerful and easy to use cloud provider. They're giving you, our followers, $100 free credit if you sign up with the links below. So you can use this free money to create machines on the cloud that will always be on and always connected to the internet. So you can use this to do so many things, such as hosting your own web applications, own files, and much more. I actually covered hosting your own VPN with Linode previously, and I also covered cracking WPA really, really quick, literally in seconds, using their powerful GPUs. The video links are in the description if you're interested, and like I said, use the link in the description to get $100 free credit with them. Thanks again Linode for sponsoring this video, and let's get started. So, the main goal is to give the target a URL to a website, and when that website loads, they'll get something that they're interested in, for example, a normal website like Z Security in here, or show them something funny, like a meme. It all depends on your target and the information you gathered about them. If you wanted to show them a website, you can simply load whatever website you want to show them, right click, save page as, Make sure you set it to complete, click on save, and then you'll have the website downloaded in the directory that you selected. And now if I double click this website, you'll see it's an identical copy of Z security, but it's loading on my local computer. So now you can simply open this HTML file in here in any text editor and start modifying it. What I wanna do though, I actually wanna send them a meme. So I could pretend to be the target's friend, and just send them something funny. In order to send this meme, I'm simply gonna click on the embed, I'm gonna copy the code, and I'm gonna put it in a text file. I'm gonna save it anywhere I want, so I'm just gonna put it in the test directory as well, and I'm just gonna call it locate. The main thing you wanna do is add the HTML extension to it so that it's a normal HTML page. We're gonna save it. And just to test it, let's run this file. So again, I'm just gonna double click it in here. And perfect, as you can see, we get the meme loading. So the goal now is to send the target a link that will load this HTML page called locate.html. And when it loads, they will simply see a funny meme where I assume that they're interested in it, but at the same time, it's gonna send us their location. So right now the page is only doing this, it's only displaying the meme, but let's upload it somewhere on the cloud so that we can send it to the target using a URL. To do that, you can use a cloud hosting, and I covered how to create your own cloud server in my Hacking Masterclass course, and I even covered it in here in this YouTube channel. So you can do it that way, but using your own server for this is a bit of an overkill. So to keep this simple, I'm just gonna use a web hosting service, I'm using 000 web host because it's free. Now again, if you want this to be more believable, you'll probably sign up to a paid one, it's very cheap. And then you can also link a domain to your website. But for the educational purposes that we're doing in here, this is more than enough because the process is exactly the same. So I'm in my file manager in this web hosting service, and I'm simply gonna upload the file that we just created. So locate.html, we're gonna open upload, and that's it, the file uploaded. Now I can right click it and click on view to load it. 
And as you can see, we're seeing the same meme, exactly the same meme loading, but now it's loading over a URL that is hosted on a web hosting service. So it's available to anybody that is connected to the internet. Now, again, as you can see, all this file is doing is simply displaying the meme. And in the case of showing them the security, you'll need to upload both of these files right here. But what we need to do right now is add code to this file that will actually send me the location of the target. Now we don't know how to do this. So simply we're going to go to Google and we're going to look for track location JavaScript. And we have a link in here from W3School. That's a really good website to learn about HTML and JavaScript and all of that. It will show you snippets of the code, a really good description of how it works. And you can even click on try it yourself to see it running. So if I click on try in here, this is going to ask for permissions to get the GPS location of my computer. So this is not based on the IP. This is based on the GPS, which is much more accurate. Now I'm going to block this because I don't want to share my location with them. But what I'm interested in is this code right here. So what you're seeing right here is the result of executing this code. And this is the code that is allowing us to get the location when the user clicks on try it. So I'm going to copy all of this code. And we're going to go back to our locate.html file that we have it in here. You can modify it in your text editor in here, or you can simply right click and click on edit to edit it on the cloud without having to download it. So I'm going to put my code before all of this in here. And I'm actually going to copy this iframe. So the part of the code that is displaying the meme and put it inside the body. So we have the body tag. This is the tag that specifies the part of the page that you actually see in the browser. And because I want that meme to be displayed to the user, I'm going to put it as the first thing in the body. And then we have the code that will get us the location. So as you can see, you have part of the code in here saying click the button to get your coordinates, this part right here of the page. Now I actually don't want to tell the user to click a button. So I'm actually going to remove this part. And I also don't want the user to click a button to get the location. I want the location to be requested as soon as the page loads. Therefore, as you can see in here, it's saying on click, I want to execute this function, the get location function. And then if we scroll down, you can see we have code in the get location that will actually get us the location. So what I want to do is I want this code to be executed as soon as the page loads. Therefore, I'm actually going to cut this from here and I'm going to remove the button because I don't need it. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to add that property to the body tag. And instead of on click, I'm going to say on load. So whenever the body part of the page loads, I'm going to execute a function called get location. And the get location function is the function that we simply copy pasted from W3 school that is going to get us the location, the GPS coordinates of the target of the person that loads the page. So, so far, so good. Let's save this. And we're going to copy the location in here. And let's go to a Windows machine and run it. So as you can see, we see the meme loading. But if you notice here at the bottom, we have the latitude and the longitude. So these are the GPS coordinates of this current computer. So this will only work if the device has a GPS. Obviously, if the laptop or the computer does not have a GPS, you won't get these coordinates. But all phones have GPSs these days, as we know. So this will work on all phones and on most laptops. Now I'm going to show you how to convert these coordinates to an actual location on a map, but we'll leave that to the end of the video. And I'm actually going to explain to you how you could make this link look much more believable and not scary like this. Again, leaving this to later because we're still not done. Because the coordinates right now are being displayed to the user and not to us as the hackers. So we don't want the user to see their own coordinates. We actually want these values to be sent to us. So what we need to do is get this file locate.html to send these coordinates to a different file that is waiting for this data and then save it on our local server in here so we can read it and translate it to the location of the target. 
To do that, we need to learn how to send data using JavaScript. So again, we're gonna go to Google and we're gonna look for send requests JavaScript. And I keep misspelling JavaScript. And if you scroll down, again, we have a link from W3School. So we're gonna load it. And again, you could learn about how to use these methods and all of that and the difference between get and post. We're gonna send the data using get. And we have the code in here, as you can see, very simple code. You could click on try it yourself to see how it works. Again, you could see the code in here and you can see the result of executing it in here. So what we're interested in is this part of the code right here. So we're gonna copy it. We're gonna go back to our locate.html. We're gonna edit it. And we're gonna read the get location function in here. And you can see it's saying if the navigator.geolocation. So if we get a location, we're gonna get the current location. And we're gonna send the result of that to a function called show position. The show position in here is actually editing the inner HTML and it's displaying latitude colon, the value of the latitude, and then longitude colon, the value of the longitude. And therefore we're actually seeing it in here at the bottom. So this is where the values of the latitude and the longitude are being used. So I'm gonna put the code that I just copied in here. We're gonna tidy it up a little bit like this. This code is basically going to send a GET request to a specific page. Now, we don't have this page on our web server at the moment, so I'm gonna just type any page name and I'm just gonna call it store.php because this page is gonna contain code to store the data in a text file. We haven't created it yet, we will create it in a second. And the values that we wanna store, so I'm gonna put a question mark. The first value is gonna be the latitude. So we're gonna say lat is equal to, and I'm gonna put a plus because now I want to put a variable similar to what's happening in here. You can see they have the text or a string within two quotations. And then when they want to replace it with a variable, they put a plus followed by the variable name. So this is the variable that is being passed from the get current position method. And it's gonna contain the value of the latitude. And then we're gonna continue our string. And in here, we're gonna put an ampersand and we're gonna say the longitude is equal to, and we're gonna put a plus like we did before, and then put the variable that contains the longitude value, which is this variable right here. So again, we're gonna copy it. We're gonna paste it in here. And now we actually don't need this code anymore because this code, like I said, simply displays the values to the user and we don't want that. So now this function is gonna get executed when the page loads, it's gonna get us the position, it's gonna send the position to a function called show position. The show position function is right here and it's gonna send a get request to a file that is called store.php and it's gonna set the latitude to the value of the latitude passed from the previous function and then it's gonna add and long followed by the value of the longitude sent from the previous function. All of that is gonna be sent to a file called store.php and therefore we're actually gonna have to create this file on the current web server. But before doing that, if you revise this code in here, you will notice before we use the open and the send, we actually have to create an object that will send this request. Now I'm not gonna explain what an object is. I do cover objects and all of that in my programming course. So right now I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible and showing you how you could do this manually even if you don't have any JavaScript experience. I'm actually not a JavaScript programmer. I know Python, but I'm able to read it and construct it like this because I spent some time reading how these methods work and programming in general is pretty simple. Once you know a language, you can actually use them all. And this is not complex programming anyway. Simply reading the documentation pages that I just mentioned should be enough for you to do all of this. So now this function is ready. It's gonna send the data to a file called store.php with the values of the latitude and the longitude and the lat and long variables. Keep these in mind because we're gonna need to use them in the store.php file, but we don't have this file right now on our web server. Therefore, we're gonna have to create it. 
So I'm going to save and close this and I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call it star.php. We're going to right click it and edit. We're going to add the PHP tags to it. And remember, this file is going to get the values of the longitude and the latitude. And the goal is to write these values in a text file. So the first thing that we're going to do is create a file using PHP. And again, if you don't know how to do that, all you have to do is go on Google and look for create file PHP. And again, you have an article on the W3 school and it'll tell you, you could use the following code to create a file. So we're going to copy it and I'm going to close these two and we're going to paste it. So now this is going to create a file called test file and I'm just going to call it location.txt. And again, if you spend some time reading how this function works, you're going to actually understand how to edit its values and all of that. We're going to add a semicolon to the end because you have to do that in PHP. And then we need to learn how to write a file in PHP. And if you scroll down in the same page, you can see it's explaining to you how to write a file. So you could create a variable called txt in here and put values in it. And finally use fwrite to write that value to my file and then close the file. So let's copy this and paste it here. So txt is a variable that contains the data to be written to the file. Then we use the fwrite method to write that data to the file. And then we close the file similar to the way you close any text file in your computer once you're done editing it. Now the data that we want to write to the file is not Jane Doe, is actually the longitude and the latitude. So I'm going to say the latitude colon is and I'm going to put a dot to concatenate text. So in PHP, you use a dot to concatenate text. Again, you can Google how to concatenate text in PHP. And the first result on Google is going to explain that to you. But I know how to do it now. So I'm not going to waste your time doing that. And we're going to put the value of the latitude that is being posted to this file from the locate.html file. So I'm going to save and close this just to show you. We have the locate.html here. And if we have a look on the code one more time, you'll see the request being sent to the store.php and the latitude is sent after the lat argument, this argument right here. Therefore, we're going to go to store.php and we're going to catch that argument by saying the latitude argument is sent to me as a get request and the value is sent under the lat argument. So we're saying the latitude value is sent as a get request. So this is the way you tell PHP that something is coming as a get request. And the argument that is holding that value is called lat. And we're setting that to lat because again, going back to the locate.html, we are actually sending it after lat is equal to. So same goes for the long. If we want to catch the value sent using the long argument, we're going to use the get variable and we're going to say the value is sent after the long argument. So we just have to go to the store.php again. We're going to use a dot to concatenate more text. And this time we're going to say the longitude colon is sent after dot to concatenate another variable. And like I said, we do dollar sign underscore get to tell PHP this is coming over a get request and it's coming after the long argument. And then all of this is going to be stored in the text variable. The text variable is going to be written to my file. My file is the location.txt file that we're opening as write and then we're going to close that file. Now there is one more thing I want to do in here before the long. I'm going to do backward slash n. And the reason for that is I'm telling PHP to actually go a new line before printing the long value so that it's printed similar to what we have in here. We're going to have the latitude first, new line, and then the longitude. So this should be all good and we should be happy with it. So I'm going to close it. And as you can see now, we don't have a file in here that contains the location, but once locate.html will be executed, it's going to send a request to the store.php that will create the location txt file that will contain the location of the target. So let's go ahead and simply refresh this page. 
Now you can see now we don't see the longitude and the latitude in here anymore because we removed the JavaScript code that displays this and we replaced it with the code that sends this data to the store.php file. So I'm going to refresh in here. And sure enough, we have a location.txt file and let's have a look at it. So I'm just going to click on edit. And perfect, as you can see, we have the latitude and the longitude of the location of my target. So now you can send this link to anybody that is connected to the internet. And once they load it, they will get whatever they're interested in, whether it's a web page or a meme. And at the same time, it's going to store their location for you in the location.txt file. Now, let me show you how we can convert this to the accurate location of the target. All you have to do is again, go to Google and just say convert GPS coordinates. And that should be enough. Clicking on the first result. And as you can see, it's asking you for the latitude and the longitude. So we're just going to need to copy them from here. So we have the latitude in here. I'm going to copy it, paste it here. And let's get the longitude, paste it here. And perfect. As you can see, it's showing you the exact location where I am. And let's zoom in. And this is actually exactly the address of our office in Dublin. So this is exactly where I am right now. So it's not like the location that you get with the IP address, which is approximate. The only limitation to this is that most computers and phones will ask the user if they want to share their location. So you have to be smart about the kind of web page that you display to them in here. Maybe show them something that usually does ask for location. And like I said, this will work perfectly on mobile phones. So let me show you an example. I'm just going to delete the existing location file. So let's load the page. And as you can see, this website is requesting to share location. The user will have to click on allow to allow it. But as you can see, the page loads exactly as we want it. But if we go to our web server, refresh, and look at our location.txt file, you'll see we have the exact GPS coordinates of the target. Now, if the target does not share this with you, if they click on deny, we can still get their IP address and approximate their location. So let's do that. And let's say get IP HTML W3 school. And I said HTML this time, not JavaScript, because it's actually hard to get it using JavaScript because it's a client side language. But again, the first link you'll get is from W3 school. It's PHP code, so that's perfect. We already have a PHP file that is being executed when the user loads our page. And as you can see, you could use this method right here to get the host name and store it in a variable called host. But we actually don't want the host name. We want the server, the IP. So you actually just need the value that is stored in the remote address. So I'm going to copy it and we're going to go to our PHP file. So let's delete actually the location now. And we're going to edit the store and we're going to say, so we're going to have the latitude, new line, and then the longitude value. And then I'm going to do a dot to concatenate. I'm going to make a string. I'm going to go down a new line and I'm going to say the IP colon is, I'm going to put a dot and the variable that contains the user IP, which is the server remote address. So we're going to save and close this. And then let's load this page again. Same happens on the phone. It's just easier for me to load it here. And let's go back, refresh, and view the location.txt. And perfect. Now we have the latitude, the longitude, and the IP. So now if the user does not give permission for us to access their GPS coordinates, we're still going to be able to get the IP. And you can translate this IP to approximate location of your target. All you have to do again is look up something like IP to location or locate IP, go with the first result and paste the IP address, IP lookup. 
and as you can see it's telling you i'm in ireland i am in dublin and some websites will actually show you a map with an approximation of where i am and you can see an approximation of the latitude and the longitude if you compare it to the values that we have in here it's not too far off like i said it's an approximation because it's based on the ip and then you can use the same gps coordinate converter to convert the approximation that you got to the location of your target now I know the video is getting very long, but let's just take this one step further and let's try to get the operating system that is running on the target computer. You can do this very, very easily using the user agent because each browser, when it loads a website, it actually sends its operating system and browser information through something that is called the user agent. So all we have to do is edit our locate.html file and add code to find the user agent. So again, exactly the same as we did before. We're just gonna go to Google and we're gonna look for get user agent JavaScript. First result is usually good. And it's telling you, you could use navigator.useragent to get the user agent. And this code in here is just storing that in a variable called agent. So all I need is this to get the user agent. And keep in mind, this is JavaScript again. So we have to add it in locate.html and not in our store.php. So let's delete the location.txt because we're going to get a new file now. And let's edit the locate.html. And the line where we actually send data to our store.php is this line right here. We're sending the latitude value under the latitude argument, the longitude value under the longitude argument. So let's add to that. And we're gonna use a plus because this is JavaScript. And we're gonna add an ampersand. And we're gonna say the U agent, short for user agent. We're gonna say that's equal to, we're gonna put a plus and the value navigator.useragent. So now the user agent is gonna be posted to our store.php as a get request under the U agent argument. We're gonna save and close and we're gonna edit our store.php now to actually store that value in the location.txt file. So again, we're gonna do a dot to concatenate, we're gonna make a string, we're gonna go a new line by doing backward slash n, we're gonna say the user agent colon and exit the quote, put a dot to concatenate, and that is gonna be sent in get. So we're gonna do dollar sign underscore get, and it's gonna be sent under the u agent argument. We're gonna save and close. And let's load this in here. Just refresh the page and refresh in here. Read our location.txt. And perfect, now we have the user agent. And it's telling us the target is using Windows NT and Windows 10 with a 64 bit processor. Now, let me show you what happens if we load this from the iPhone. So let's delete it and go to the iPhone, refresh it, give it permission. And let's go in here, refresh the page. We have our location.txt, let's read it. And perfect, as you can see now, it's telling us that the target is using an iPhone. It's iPhone OS, it's giving us the exact version of the iPhone and the web engine that is used in the web browser. Now, you could actually keep playing with this and add in more code. For example, you can edit the locate.html and add the beef hook code. And that way, when the target user loads this page, not only that you're gonna get their location and their user agent and all of that, you will also get them hooked to beef. And I actually covered how to install beef on the cloud in the hacking masterclass. So if you're interested in that, check out that lecture. Once you have it installed, all you have to do is simply paste the hook code in the locate.html and you'll have them hooked. And the possibilities are endless. Like I said, you can simply, whatever idea you can think of, look it up on Google on how to implement it and implement it yourself. So I don't want to make this video too long for you, but the main thing I wanted to get across is these tools don't really do any magic. And if you just break down the problem or the goal that you want to achieve and look up on Google on how to do this step by step, achieving it could be very, very simple.
I also said that I'm gonna talk about how to make this link be more believable and all you have to do is simply purchase a domain name, it's very cheap and then you can actually link that domain name to this web hosting so when somebody types for example zade.com they will end up in here. There is also a number of ways that you can manipulate this URL. I'm not gonna dive into them right now because this video has gotten too long, but they're very simple. I actually cover them in my social engineering course, but you can also simply just look up on Google URL manipulation techniques and you'll find a lot of ways that you could make this URL much more believable and easy to fish the target. And again, also there are a lot of delivery methods. So you could send this as a spoofed email or as a spoofed SMS that looks like it's being sent from the user's friend. Again, all of this is covered in my courses or we look it up on Google. I just can't cover all of these things in one video. It'll just be way too long. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you around in future videos. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell to be updated every time we release a new video.